If you need to create a list of items, one that's prioritized or ordered, like one being the most important, followed by two, three, four, and so on, like creating a shopping list, or better yet, how about a camping list? Oh yeah, let me hit enter. Now for the first item, I can number it myself or let Word do the numbering for me by coming up here on the Home tab to the Paragraph group and clicking on Numbering. Create a numbered list. Click on it. Begins with 1. Great. The most important item to me when I'm camping is going to be, I don't know about you, but that's muy importante. So let me hit Enter. Automatically updates, goes to the next line and says that's the second most important or number 2 within the list. Enter. And then when you're done and you want to go down below and type in some additional information about where the campsite's at, well, that's not part of the list, hit enter. And Word doesn't know that you're done with the list, so you can do one of quite a few things. You can either go ahead and hit the backspace key once, gets rid of the number, but it has the left indent aligned with the items here. Hit the backspace key again, then it goes back and aligns with the numbers, hit it again, and then we're back to the margin here. Or, let me hit undo couple of times, several times. You could hit enter, automatically removes it, and takes us back to the beginning to the left margin here, or let me hit undo. You can come up here on the home tab to the paragraph group and then just deselect it and say you're done with numbering, in which case it removes it like hitting the enter key on the keyboard for a second time. In any case you got your choices there. And let me hit enter again and let's do another list. Hit enter of items that I'd like to bring that maybe if there's enough room to bring in what's in my top three that I can bring additional items or again my additional list like. Now you're probably thinking well why didn't you turn on the numbered list again so we can have it numbered and prioritized. Well I'm doing that because what if somebody sends you a document or you got one that you're like hey I'd like to go ahead and order this how do I do it because it's already there how do I get this into the numbered one two three. To do that, just go ahead and click and drag to select it, and then you can, well, instead of coming up here on the Home tab to the Paragraph group and clicking on the numbers there, in the Mini Formatting Toolbar, well, when it did pull up, let me try it again, click and drag, and if it doesn't pull up, well, then you can go ahead and right click on the selection, then you can bring it back up again. In any case, you also get the option to turn the numbering on there as well. Click on it, and it numbers them. And then you'll notice over to the left hand side, you get this little smart tag, it's the autocorrect options. And we'll talk about the autocorrect options feature in more detail in a later training video. But as far as pertaining to the list here, when you click on it, Word is telling us that, hey, I see a list that's already there above this one. Is this a continuation of that list? Because if it is, I want to go ahead and continue the numbering from 3 to, click on it, 4. Or if you don't like it, the autocorrect option is still there. You can restart and it will never go away, that little tag, until you perform another action. Like if I hit the space bar, then it goes away. Let me go ahead and hit the backspace, and if I'm like, oh fudge, I want to go ahead and continue that, but the autocorrect option is no longer there. Or, again, you get this from somebody else, you're like, how do I go ahead and continue it? I tell my students, when in doubt, right click, because usually what you're looking for is going to be in that shortcut menu. So let's go ahead and right click on the first item, and there we go, continue. Click on it, and it picks up where the last one left off. Or, again, right click and say, nah, I'd like to restart at one. Now keep in mind that when you're converting a bunch of items into a list, that each item has to have its own paragraph. For example, up here on the Home tab, Paragraph Group, let's click on the Show Codes. And I'm whipping through this because I assumed you watched previous training videos, and I would only speed through things if we covered them previously, otherwise I would slow down. In any case, if these guys don't have their own paragraphs, when you convert it into a list, like for example, let me click at the end of Toilet Paper, hit the Delete key, then Word is going to think, okay, I've got nothing breaking it up, so I'm going to put these two together, but to us, they're two separate items because we don't have a toilet paper tent. I mean, the big bad wolf wouldn't have a problem blowing that thing down. So instead, make sure that your items, before you convert them, let me hit backspace enter, has its own paragraph. So that's why I hit enter at the end of each one of these items before I selected them and said go ahead and convert that into a numbered list. So it can number the items correctly and not have pillow matches where the pillow and the matches are together and just like we talked about with our fabulous example of toilet paper tent. Let me go ahead and turn off the codes here and let me show you some other options you got with your list. Well you don't have to select the list to be able to look at other formatting options with the list as opposed to one, two, three. You can have ABCs. 
so we don't have to select it just click anywhere within the list here number three the last item the first item doesn't matter and then you can right click to bring up the mini formatting toolbar click on the corresponding drop down arrow next to the numbering or let me click off up here in the paragraph group you got the same thing it's just that a right click bringing up the mini formatting toolbar is a lot closer but Click on the corresponding drop down arrow here, and you can see one, two, three, but you can go Roman numeral, hover over it, get a preview of it. If you like it, great, go with it. If not, then, well, choose something else, like maybe this one. And if you don't like any of those, then you can just move off of it, not select it. Or better yet, if you want to define your own and create a custom number format, click on that down below, and you can choose the style, go through it, find one that works for you. I'm going to go with one, two, three. And you can actually change the formatting for the style. Click on font. Maybe make it bold. Say choose a color that's red. And then click okie dokie. And then the number format is one. Of course, you can go ahead and customize that and type in something else to it. Like, well, since it's the second list, it's the extra list. That's my acronym for extra. And you can do that. That's fun. And then the alignments, left, centered, or right. If we did centered, It'll give you a preview of it, and if you did right, wow, really goes over. So let's just go ahead and keep it left, and then see what it looks like when we click okie dokie. Oh, that's just crazy. Look at that. We got a lot of gapage in between that. How do we close the gap? Well, let's come up here and click on show codes, and you can see the arrows as we went over in an earlier training video are tabs. And so how do we bring that one? Let me go ahead and click and drag and select all these guys here, and then come up in the horizontal ruler that's the left indent so if I click on that it moves that further away from the items in the list so if I click and drag that over closer fabulous brings them up even tighter to it so it's not so far away from its neighbor but you can go ahead and say the first line bring that out so you can bring everything over and get it more aligned with this and so you can play with those indent markers there to get it to where you think it looks apropos. In any case, let me go ahead and hit undo several times because I don't want to go with any of those. And after that, if you want to bring it back up, come back up here, click on the drop down arrow, and it remembers. It was recently used. You can go ahead and go back to that if you'd like. And as part of the numbering library, you can right click on it, say you want to remove it, and never speak of it again. Okay, next, you can go ahead and create a gap in between the items within the list if you want to change the numbering sequence. Like, for example, in the additional list, we have pillow, but I know I got some other things that I want to add before I bring along matches and comic books, maybe three additional things, four or five. In any case, if I right-click on number two, I can come up and say that I want to set the numbering value from two on. Click on it, and there's two. Let's say that it's going to be the fourth value within the list and then click okie dokie and so when I look at the list now I can say okay I've got pillow but oh I'm missing two additional items number two and number three so then maybe I want to go ahead and when I find them hit enter and there's number two type in water hit enter food and finish your list yeah looks like I'll die of thirst and food before I let go of my pillow for sleeping at night and then the previous list but hey that's just the way I roll now, instead of a numbered list, if we want a list that's not really in any particular importance, it's just something that we have to bring everything, just make sure you bring them all so we're not confused. Let me come up here and trump the codes first. We can go ahead and convert the numbers into a bulleted list. And so to do that, let's go ahead and click here. Then come up here on the Home tab in the Paragraph group. And there it is, Bullets, Create a Bulleted List. Click on it, and it converts the entire list from numbers to bullets. Of course, you get the autocorrect option to say undo the formatting, go to the previous items, the numbers, but whatever. We're going to leave it there. And to get rid of that little guy, we'll just do another action and he'll disappear as soon as we turn our backs on it. Okay, let's go ahead and learn how to customize our bullets or define a bullet if we don't like what we see up here in the corresponding drop down arrow next to the bullets, which we got some, well, a circle, a square, looks like a little ship. In any case, you can select one of those and when you hover over it, you get a preview of it over in the document. Or you can go ahead and change the list level and I can go down to A1. Well, I'm not going to change that. I want to define a new bullet. And you can do it one of many ways. You can choose a symbol and say, what's her symbol? A heart. 
go ahead and click okie dokie, you can see the hearts down the preview window. That's fun. Or how about a picture picture? Click on that, you can browse and find a picture somewhere on your computer, or you can go ahead and do a search. How about hit enter and see what we find here. And yeah, we'll choose this one. And then go ahead and click on insert. Uh-oh, I don't see a preview of it down below. Probably not a good example. Let's go ahead and click on picture and click on browse instead of finding one off the internet in case if the size doesn't work. Let's see if I can do one here. Maybe do a sample picture. Double click and we'll do the desert. Double click. Oh, there you go. Okay, that stands out. And you can choose the left alignment, centered, whatever you'd like. And of course, the final one is the font. So how do I get to font? It doesn't allow me to select it now since I selected picture. If I go back to symbol and I choose like hearts and click okie dokie, then I can go ahead and choose font and make the heart bold. It kind of pops out a little bit. Maybe change the color of the heart to something red. Aw, isn't that cute? I do have a heart. In any case, you can do the picture, you can do the hearts, whatever you see here in the preview window. Just make sure you see it there because if you don't, as you just saw, then when you click OK, it's not going to appear over to the left hand side. And it does. Hey, happy Valentine's Day. So we covered the numbered list, the bulleted list, now the multi-level list. You can click on that and see, well, there's the current list. So what this means is that at the first level within the list in the hierarchical structure is the heart. If I want to go down to the next level, that means that if I, the letter A, if I click after this and I hit enter, then I hit the tab key, there's the sub to the main here. So toilet paper, maybe it has to be soft, oh yeah, then hit enter. And that also has to be large rows. So that's all supporting of the main thought, idea, or item here about toilet paper. And so when I come back up here and I click on multi-level list, hover over it, you see how the hierarchical structure goes. So underneath the A and B, if I go ahead and create another item below that and I indent it, then it would be the lowercase i. So if I come underneath large rolls, hit enter, and I hit the tab key, and it pushes it over. So you see how that hierarchical structure is being defined in the multi-level list? Well, there you go. So let's go ahead and hit the backspace key, and then it goes back to the next level. Hit the backspace key again, and then it goes to the original level here. Hit the backspace key again, and you can keep doing that. But for me, if I let me just go ahead and hit the delete key on the keyboard so I can just go ahead and pull the item up above and not have to keep hitting back, back, back. In any case, to promote or demote the items within the list or to increase or decrease indents, well, as you just saw, if you go ahead and hit enter and it creates the next list and you hit the tab key, it pushes it over. Or if you want to go ahead and take one of these and click in front of the name of the item right after the numbered sequence, or in this case, the letter sequence, and hit the tab key, that demotes it. And then to promote it or to decrease the indent, hold down the shift key, hit the tab key, and it brings it back, shift tab, and now large rolls is a main item, which I have no idea what that is, unless it was large, large cinnamon rolls, huh? There you go. And you can do it that way, or you can come up here on the home tab to the paragraph group, and that's what you got these buttons for here as well, increase the indent. So now he's demoted, now he's part of the toilet paper idea, thought, item there. Large cinnamon rolls doesn't make sense, and you can go ahead and decrease that and say, well, doesn't describe soft, but nonetheless, you can go ahead and use that to increase or decrease or promote or demote within your multi-level list. Now, we went ahead and we applied the multi-level list to this, but actually, let's click before the word water and hit the tab key. It actually converts it into a multi-level list, even though the number list is still selected, and click on the drop-down arrow. And at that level, it's ABCs. But if you click on the drop-down arrow for the numbered list, uh, that's what you're looking at right now. 1A, and then the lowercase i. So if I come over here, hit the tab key again, you see it's a multi-level list without really telling you or highlighting this multi-level list. Just know that it starts off with something simple as I hit undo or I go ahead and decrease the indent or the shift-tab shortcut key to bring it back to the original level which is the numbered list, just know that, well, it doesn't stay there if you want to go out of bounds and just go ahead and start indenting any one of these in the numbered list. And it won't highlight it over here in the multi-level list, as you just saw, but nonetheless, it'll be pulling from that. And the same goes with bullets. If I convert this to bullets, whoops, didn't convert all of them. Let me go ahead and hit undo. 
and let's select it and go ahead and that way if it does become an issue you want to go ahead and select all of them so all of them change over and then if I go ahead and select the second one hit the tab key and demote it it actually has got its own hierarchical structure now doesn't it hit the tab key again it becomes a square so it is a multi-level list now instead of just a single bulleted list you can click on the drop down arrow and you can see at that level it's got that bullet but at the multi-level list level you can see how it's organized by hovering over the current list the one that I'm currently in right now with the solid bullet then the next level the supporting to the solid bullet is that open circle then of course below that's a square and so on and just like the numbering even though I changed it it's still staying at the bullet level here but it is a multi-level so really you can just go ahead and select bullets or numbers and then at any time go ahead and use the tab key to push it over and create your levels within there the multi-level without actually coming over here and selecting it unless you like what's in their list library here or you want to really get persnickety and define a new multi-level list thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel get notified of the latest videos and for only two dollars a month you can have access to all my microsoft office training videos